All right, so in today's video, I want to take a look at arrays, namely how to actually resize them, because this is not something that's obvious how to do in C, or if possible at all. So let's get started. Let's start with a simple array. So I'm going to say here int array of four, just four elements. And I'm going to also add a last index. So this is going to be basically the last index that is free for this array, right? So we have here, I'll call it zero because that's the, the consider the array that uh, is empty. And uh, well, the first index of that array is actually empty, so we can use that, right? So how do you, first, how do you add elements to this array? Well, very straightforward. You just say array of last index equals, let's say 17, right? And then all you have to do is just increment this last index, right? If I do now a printf, let's say printf, let's do send the backslash n and do array of zero. So that's the first element and change here. Let's say first element. All right, perfect. And if I try to launch this, we're going to see first element 70. So that worked. Perfect. Now, um, let's say we want to add more elements. Let's say we want to add three more elements, right? We just do the same exact operation. Let's change this to be, oh, I don't know, let's say 18, 19, and let's say 20. Okay. And then I'm going to just print out last element. All right. So I'm going to do last element. Last element we know is the is array of three at this point because our array has four elements, right? And this is the last one. And if I try to print everything, well, it shows first and last element perfectly fine. In between, suppose that everything is perfectly working. Now, what happens if we actually want to add another element? Because, well, we have an array of four elements and we want to add uh, one more element to an array that's already full. What's going to happen? Well, if we try to um, add one more element, let's say 21 here, you will notice that it actually crashed. You can see that here I got a, a SIGA board and nothing got printed on the screen. Why is that? Well, the expression is actually very simple, right? Uh, the last index here, when we increment it, gets to become one. Okay, here it becomes two, here it becomes three, and here it becomes four, right? So up until here, everything was fine. Here was three and array of three was accessed. We know we have access to array of three, but here, down here, array of four was accessed, which since our array only has four elements, we try to access, access the fifth element of that array and it crashed, right? And this is basically called undefined behavior because it could crash, it could work for you maybe, but uh, uh, there's, a, there's a chance it could crash, so you cannot use this type of code. Now, suppose that this part of the code is in a different place than the beginning part, right? Suppose this array is somewhere else that you don't have control over, because otherwise we could just, you know, increase this to a five and then everything would work perfectly fine. But that's, that's not what we are after, right? We want to change this, the size of this array so that we can add more elements without actually um, changing its initialization. How can we do that? Well, one simple way of doing it is to just create another array and copy everything over. So I can just say here um, int array two of, let's say this time eight elements, and I can just create a for loop. Let's say I'm going to have here an int i, I'm going to go i equals zero, i less than, in this case, it's just um, four, right? And i plus plus, an array of array two of i equals array of i. Okay, and then we can simply use array two from now on. Okay, so this is gonna work perfectly fine. And here we can also use array two as well. Now, if I try to launch this, you'll notice that it, it works. Now the last element is not 20, of course, right now it's actually of index four. And I can actually do last index minus one, that's the last element if I wanted to, and it should show 17 to 21, that works perfectly fine. Okay, so this works in this situation, but let's, let's also assume another thing that uh, happens in many cases. Let's assume that this part of the code, this printf statements are not actually here, are somewhere else, somewhere else in the code and we cannot actually change it. So uh, we actually have to print out the, the first and the fourth element as they are from the initial array. Can we have the code do that for us? Can uh, this work? At first glance, you might say, okay, well, it's pretty straightforward, right? You can just say array equals array two so that you just make the array be um, our new array that is much larger, right? 
You will notice that if we try to compile this, it doesn't actually work. And it's going to give us an error saying that, well, ARR as a identifier is not actually assignable. You cannot overwrite the memory that it represents. So we cannot do that, of course. So the question is, can we actually do this? Well, with the current setup, we cannot, right? If we want uh, to make a larger array, this is not possible. Now, this is not possible simply because the array that we have here is allocated on a stack, okay? Um, the stack, as you might know, every, every function call has a stack that gets allocated when it is called, okay? So for every single uh, variable here, you actually have some memory allocated to it when you call this function, okay? But it's right before calling the function that this memory gets allocated, so for this array. And this array has only been allocated four elements for it. You cannot change that. Therefore, what needs to be done is to actually move this array from the stack to the heap, okay? The heap is the diff it's a different type of memory that can be uh, allocated and deallocated at will, okay? So how do we actually do this? Well, we can change the type or the initialization of this array. So you can say here int, we're going to call it a pointer this time, array, and we're going to say malloc of size of int, so we want integers, and let's say we want still four elements in this, okay? And here now, well, instead of an array, we have a pointer, but the code itself here, what we have is going to work as intended. So if I just launch this, it's going, it's going to work properly. Let's not forget about freeing this memory, okay? So uh, for every malloc, you want to have a, a free, so I'm going to just call free here for our array that we allocated. Anyway, um, this works perfectly fine. So now that we have our array on the heap, we can actually manipulate the memory for it and we can actually resize it using a simple function called realloc. Okay, so we can remove all this and can say uh, realloc and this function just takes in two parameters, similar, similar to malloc actually. Um, it takes in the array, the pointer at which we want to reallocate some memory or from which we want to reallocate some memory and then uh, the new size of this um, part of memory. Here we want, again, we want integers, but let's say we want eight integers this time. Now just calling realloc here is not enough. As you might notice from my um, editor here, it does warn me that I am actually ignoring the return value of realloc. And it's actually a very, very good idea to not ignore that. First things first, we need to say here int pointer, so int pointer, and let's say, I don't know, let's call it realloc uh, result or something like that. Um, okay. And here, after the realloc call, we can actually check if the realloc happened, okay? Because there are cases in which realloc fails, okay? If you try to allocate, I don't know, terabytes of memory, you can imagine that that would fail. So in this case, we can actually do check just by saying realloc. If realloc result is null, then, oh, I don't know, let's say, I'm going to say print f and uh, realloc failed for array or something like this. And I'm just gonna return a error value that's a one in my program, it doesn't matter. Now the next step is to actually do something with this result that we've got here. Um, what is it actually? Well, it is the new memory location of our array. Okay, so the, the operating system first allocated four integers for us somewhere in memory. And when we called realloc, it uh, might have allocated a different place in memory of eight integers and moved everything there, okay? This is not guaranteed, you know? Realloc result could still, could still be the same as array. The memory, the memory might not have moved anywhere, it just has grown a little bit in size. That could also happen, but you never know. You, you don't actually know that from, the, uh, from what we're getting here in the code, right? So we have to actually do something like this, say array equals realloc result, all right? And now, thankfully, we don't need to actually use array two here. We can just remove this and we can properly use everything at our disposal. We can change this free, let's say, to last index minus one, because that's supposed to be the last element. And uh, now if you try to launch this, you'll see that it works perfectly fine. Now, one important thing to note here is that realloc does actually deallocate the previously uh, sent memory here, right? So if if it did change the memory, then the previously allocated one here at uh, this line of code, uh, it got deallocated. So we don't have to call free more than once, right? We only have to free the actual 
um, either the real knock result, which in our case is going to be again R, or um, or um, our array, our initial array. So the, actually the more correct thing to do here would be to call free of R here. But since we are actually exiting out of the program, this is not really a big issue. If you want to know more about realloc, I made a video previously that you can check up top. Now, as you might have noticed, this is quite cumbersome to do, right? We have to check, we have to call realloc, we have to check uh, the result, and then we have to assign something to it. And moreover, how do we know when to actually uh, reallocate this array? Okay, so here is very simple because we only have four uh, last index increments, but uh, what if it's something more dynamic? How do we check that and how much memory do we allocate? Well, we're gonna take a look at uh, this in the next video where I'm gonna cover an array that can uh, grow basically without bounds, without any issues. All right, I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care, bye.